Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to show you how I created my first set of cards using the June 2020 sheet load of cards. Along the way I'll also give you a couple tips so I hope you'll stick around and see how I made them. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. In yesterday's video, I debuted the latest sheet load of cards, the June 2020 issue. If you haven't seen that video to know how to download your free printable and see the set I made, I will have that video linked below and at the end of this video as a card. So make sure you go check that out. Today, I'm gonna to show you how I made those cards. And like I said before, I'll have a couple tips for you along the way. Before I get started on the process, I wanted to share with you the main products that I'll be using for my cards today. If I add anything later as we go along, I will make sure to let you know about it. For my sentiments today, I have got out a new to me stamp set, Pretty Pink Posh's Thoughtful Greetings. I just love the script font paired with the sans serif or the more typed font. I will be stamping that in Versamark and heat embossing with gold embossing powder. And then I will be embellishing my cards a little bit with these clear gold glittered circles. If you watched my show us your sheet load or my happy mail video from the 31st, you will have already heard about these. But as soon as I saw someone use these on cards, I had to go online and search and find out who made these so I could have them for myself. I'll try to insert a close up picture here of what these look like on cards. I just love that gold frame and then that clear glitter in the middle. These are by Elizabeth Craft Designs and I will have them linked below if you want to go check them out. I will of course be using the sheet load printable and again this is free for subscribers so make sure to check out yesterday's video when you're done here and listen all the way through to find out how to download the file for yourself. For my 6A2 card bases I actually already have those pre-cut and scored and they're off camera but this is just you cut in half the tall ways and then fold down from the top. I will be using white cardstock for my CS1 and I am going to be changing this up a little bit so make sure to stay tuned. For my CS2 and my CS3 I'm going to be using some gold foiled paper. This is from Michaels and just so you know the reason that I'm not taking it out more so you can see the shine is because sometimes it really messes with my camera lighting. So rest assured it is metallic gold foil. Probably later when I cut it I will also cut it upside down but on the final cards you'll be able to see the shine on that. And then finally I'm going to be using three pieces of pattern paper from Stampin' Up. My friend Danny shared these with me. These are double sided. And I haven't decided yet, but I might flip it back and forth later for my final cards just to get more variation. Before I get too far today, I do want to remind you that all of my collaborators are going to be sharing their cards with you today as well. I have collaborators here on YouTube, on Instagram, and on blogs. So make sure to click on their links in the description box below and see how they use the June 2020 sheet load of cards. It's always fun to see the different variations so I hope you'll go check them out, leave them some love. When I do start the process of my cards I will go to a voiceover. If I leave you with any questions make sure to leave those in the comment section below. Let's get crafty! I'm going to start this set by cutting my pattern paper per the instructions on page two of the printable. I'm not going to bore you with this a whole lot, but I did want to show you that my trimmer allowed me to cut all three of these pieces of paper at one time. I might have had to go over it a couple extra times, but I like that this was nice and quick. Again, for all of these sizes and details on cutting, refer to your printable.
Like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be cutting my CS1 just a little bit differently because the sentiments I want to use are wider than the one and a half inch that I called for on this sketch. I'm actually going to cut these so they are one and three quarters inches wide by that three inches tall. The one and three quarters is going to end up being the same as the mat on the other fishtail banners. When I cut these, I'm just going to cut until I get six pieces the size I need. And to make it easier, I slide my cardstock from right to left and I find the one and three quarter inch mark to the left of the cutting line. Next, I'm going to be cutting my gold foil paper using the CS2 and CS3 cutting diagrams. Like I mentioned before, I am going to turn this upside down just so it doesn't mess with the camera lighting. A lot of these pieces today for these cards do require a fishtail in the end of the skinnier strips, but I'm going to wait and I'll be showing you how I do that here in just a little bit. My cutting diagram does allow for some extra gold at the end of the pattern paper strips and this is just going to help you here in a second where we start to hand trim the fishtail banners and their mats. Now I'll explain a little bit about how I got my fishtail ends into the strips. I got out my Stampin' Up! Triple Banner Punch and I'm actually just using this for a template. You'll see here that I pre-cut a piece of cardstock the same length and width as the longest pa pattern paper strip and when I punch it, you'll see that it ends up being about a quarter inch shorter. So you could always use the Stampin' Up! Triple Banner Punch if you want, but you'll have to make sure that you make adjustments in the size that you cut your strips or you'll have to just live with them being a little shorter than on the original sketch. Once I had my template created, I aligned that with the bottom of one of the pattern paper strips. I then cut into the center point and cut up from each side to make my fishtail banner. Once this was done, I then used that piece of pattern paper that I had just cut and I cut two of the rest of the strips at a time beneath it. And I just continued the same process until I had all of the banners cut in the pattern paper strips. Because my sentiment cardstock pieces are just as wide as my gold mats, I can't quite cut the fishtail banner in the ends of those. First, I will need to mat each of my pattern paper strips with that gold foil paper and hand trim the banner at the end of that. And I just cut these and try to get as even of a border as I can. Now I can use one of these to make a template in the CS1 pieces for the rest of my sentiment strips. Because these pattern papers are double sided, I did decide that I would use one of each side. So before I continue to mat these pieces, I flipped them each over so I had one of each pattern and then I just proceeded to mat and hand trim the fishtails in all of these until they were finished. My next step is to create kind of little card kits for each card. So I laid out my pattern papers in the same order from left to right, just to ensure that when I go and grab a piece from each section, that my card will have three different pattern papers. Once I had all of my pattern papers organized, it was time to stamp my sentiments. I got out my Misty so that I could stamp each sentiment twice just because these are new stamps and they don't always take the ink as well as a nice gently used stamp. I did use my embossing buddy on the front of that piece just to ensure that my embossing powder sticks only to where I want it to. So I dumped my gold embossing powder on there and got out my heat tool and this did hurt my fingers a little bit. That piece is pretty small. So you'll notice on the next one, I fixed that by getting out some tweezers to hold it. But I just love that extra gold sparkle there on the sentiment. 
I thought that the sentiment on my first try was a little too low, so I made sure on this one to move my sentiment up higher on the flag. But you'll notice that once I stamp it and apply my embossing powder, that the top of the stamp didn't stamp. And at first I thought, oh no, it's a new stamp, it didn't work. But then I realized my magnet was probably stopping it from stamping completely. So I adjusted my magnet and just started over because I wiped the powder off the front and now I can just stamp and emboss on the back. And like I mentioned before, I went ahead and got out my tweezers to use from here on out for the embossing. And what I like about these tweezers is that they are actually closed unless you squeeze them open. Now that I have all of the pieces ready for my cards, I thought it would be a good time to stop and do a little semi-hidden giveaway. Now the reason this is semi-hidden is because I told you about it in yesterday's video. I'm going to be dividing each of these sheets in half, so I will have two winners in this giveaway. To enter, you do need to be a subscriber to my channel who is 18 years or older and lives in the United States. If you are interested in being entered, give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment below with your favorite type of embellishment, and then make sure to include the hashtag, hashtag EnterMe. That way I know that you want to be entered into the drawing and then that hashtag is how I sort those by. So it does have to look exactly like that so your comment is considered. You'll need to leave your comment before June 15th, 2020 and then I'll be back that following week to announce the two winners. Let's get back to our card making. And now it's time to start putting these cards together. The first thing I do is adhere piece A onto the front of my card and it should cover that entire card base. Next, I will place all three of my fishtail banners. It will go from largest to smallest. And then I was just referring to the sketch to help with the placement. That was just off to the side. Once I have the two larger fishtails on there, I then just place my sentiment kind of centered left to right within those two. The second card will feature a landscape or horizontal sentiment, so you'll notice that putting them together is pretty much the same, except I turn my card base and my fishtail banners just 90 degrees. Make sure to keep in mind that if your pattern paper does have a specific top and bottom, you probably can't go back and forth within one card set like I did for mine. I then just repeated this same process until all six of my cards were put together. I could have stopped here and called it good because you know I usually say a card's not done until there is some bling and I do already have some sparkle with my metallic cardstock, but I just had to get out my new embellishments and use those. So I placed three on each of the card fronts, just kind of in a triangle pattern and I did use some different sizes. To see close-ups of each of the cards, you could watch yesterday's video, and then while you're there, find out how you can download the printable for free. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made today's cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Now don't forget to go visit all of the collaborators linked in the description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.